Hey, what's up? My name is Mariah Karina, and today I want to talk about how you can tell gaslighting from a gaslighter. Gaslighting is a term that has become very popular, and for good reason. It's kind of like a shorthand for a very complex set of relational dynamics. And because it's become popular, it's starting to be used more colloquially and becomes one of the things that we consider when we're trying to make sense of our experience. And so what I've noticed as a counselor working with individuals and couples is that it can be very common now for someone to wonder, am I being gaslighted? Or for two people in a relationship to be like, you're gaslighting me. No, you're gaslighting me. That's what a gaslighter would say. Well, that's what a gaslighter would say. And gaslighting is super fascinating and there are tons of resources out there and I highly recommend that you check it out to learn more. But what I wanna to cover today is how to differentiate when you're in a relationship where gaslighting is a behavior that is occasionally occurring in a way that indicates other underlying issues from when you are with a gaslighter. So what I would say is that these two things exist on a spectrum. And over here, if you are with a gaslighter, you are in a relationship that is being sustained by manipulation. And you are with a person who is enacting a very specific and very damaging kind of emotional abuse in which they are consciously and intentionally using tactics in order to make you confused and doubtful of your own sanity, self-value, and perception of reality. And then over here you have gaslighting where the relationship is primarily characterized by compassion and the desire for mutual understanding. However, there are certain instances or occurrences when there will be the diminishing or the dismissing of another person's emotions, self-value, or perception of reality. And over on this side of the spectrum, there may be gaslighting present. However, it is not something where one person is constantly in the role of feeling gaslit and the other person is constantly in the role of being the gaslighter. It's more like it's an energy or a action that either of you could enact at any time. It's like an energy that flows between you or through your relational system. And then of course, there are all of these overlapping possibilities in between. However, if you are on this side of the spectrum where gaslighting is occurring, I would say it's important for you to gauge the depth and damage that is caused to you by this behavior to determine if it feels abusive to you. And if it does feel abusive, get out. However, what I have noticed that in some couples where gaslighting is present or the accusation of gaslighting is present, a different way of framing what's happening is that the couple is actually in a power struggle over whose reality gets to be the shared narrative of the couple. And it starts moving closer to this side of the spectrum. If that power struggle over whose reality gets to be the shared narrative is a power struggle that one person is consistently losing. Like if one person is consistently wrong and unworthy and one person is consistently right and the good one, that's when you start getting into a dynamic that is more like being with a gaslighter that starts to feel abusive and really degrades the person's sense of self-worth and sanity over time. And often, but not always, if this is a heterosexual couple, it could be more likely for the female in the heterosexual couple to be the one who is more likely to always feel like they're wrong or losing because of the social conditioning of women and of sexism that would make them more susceptible to acquiesce to the other person's version of reality and to doubt their own reality. And also because if it's a power struggle, it's more common for men to be socially conditioned into asserting their power externally and for women to be socially conditioned into inverting their power. So instead of sort of saying like, hey, no, this is what happened to me, this was my subjective experience and fighting for it outside in the relationship, they'll take it in and all that power will go in in the form of inner criticism and the feeling like maybe I'm the one that's wrong and maybe I'm crazy. And also because this power struggle over what is reality exists within a general context of patriarchy. So in patriarchy, there's objective reality and there's subjective reality. And we're always trying to get to that objective reality. And so if it's also included in the power struggle, um, a question of who is the sane one, the good one, 
the logical one, all values that are hot, held in high esteem within patriarchy, then who is sane and good and logical also depends on who's more connected to objective reality. So as women, we might be more socialized to consider that our reality is subjective and we might be perceived as others as experiencing a more subjective reality, whereas someone who is conditioned male might be con perceiving themselves as more connected to objective reality. However, these dynamics can play out across any gender identity or sexual orientation, and instances of gaslighting can occur as manifestations of this power struggle. So what I'm gonna do is cover three root dynamics that might be leading to a phenomenon that could be labeled gaslighting, but are coming from an unconscious and unintentional place, and what to do about it. First is that someone's trauma could be triggered. And a lot of times when we're in relationships, especially intimate relationships, but it could be educational, professional, family, whatever, when our trauma is triggered, strangely enough, the other person's trauma is also triggered. We get into this sort of traumatic eclipse where like the sun and the moon of each of our trauma line up. And I like to call this two triggers, no ears. Because when we're in those trauma triggers, we really can't perceive any sort of objective reality. We are seeing through the filter of our trauma and through the filter of all of what is activated for us. And we tend to have this be an eclipse phenomenon because we tend to make other people our monsters, right? We put them in the role of our abusers and we experience what's coming towards us from the place of what happened to us when we felt in those abusive situations. And so there could be a phenomenon of projection going on where each person is experiencing whatever the objective reality in the center is from the place of their trauma. And so in that space of two subjective realities attempting to fight over which subjective reality is the objective reality, you get into the experience of like, hey, I'm being gaslit here. Hey, I'm being gaslit here. But it's really because both of you are connected to your subjective experience and you're fighting over the wrong thing in a certain way. And so my key here would to be to let go of the obsession with objective reality and try as best as you can to make room for two subjective realities. And this is incredibly difficult because we want to be seen by the other person and because we really feel like our subjective reality is the truth, but it can be fantastic to build enough spaciousness in your relationship to actually have it be flexible and large enough to hold the felt reality experience of both of your subjectivities. And then of course, if this is happening, if your trauma is coming up with another person, go seek out individual therapy. And also try and see if you can talk about what is going on, about what your trauma is, about what the other person's trauma is, about how it's being triggered by your relationship dynamic when you're not triggered. And maybe talking about it when you're not triggered and everything is all super heightened and your nervous system is activated, it'll make it easier in those moments to bring awareness to what's happening or at least make the kind of recovery time after the inciting incident to realize, oh, we were triggered, we were both experiencing different things, we were both experiencing it from the perspective of our trauma. You wanna be very careful in terms of gaslighting that it's not like someone says, oh, this is your trauma, I'm fine, right? If you feel like you're in a situation where maybe the other person is also being influenced in terms of how they're perceiving reality by their own trauma, but they're saying it's all you and they're completely cool, then you might be further on this side of the spectrum. The second is that a lot of times a person's defense mechanisms could feel like gaslighting. So the person might be threatened by what it is that you're bringing to them and all their defense mechanisms cut up and their immediate instinct is to shut down what you're saying, to shut down the challenge to your worldview, to gain control of the situation, to get the power back and to control you. And this might be that kind of situation where a classic gaslighting move is to accuse someone of what you're afraid they're going to accuse you of. So you, this would be the situation where their defense mechanism, if they're lying, is to accuse you of lying. But it might be more subtle than that. That it might be like you bring a feeling to them like, hey, I was hurt by this, and they say you have no right to be hurt by that. And it is just from that sort of blind reactive place of like, I don't like that you were hurt by that, so I'm gonna try and shut you down. And so that fear is coming out as this offensive 
and aggressive reaction. And I would say part of the key here is just to bring compassion right? A lot of us weren't taught very good communication skills and what to do when we feel confronted or challenged by something. We might have picked up a lot of bad habits along the way from our society, from our family, from our culture. Being confronted by shit is hard and we aren't taught very well how to admit when we are doing something that we're ashamed of. So the key here to really gauge kind of where on that spectrum you are is if after maybe an initial period of reactivity, they are able to hear you. Can they pick up the accusation? Can they admit their behavior? Can they sort of make space for your experience and the impact that it had on you? Can they recognize that they were being defensive in the moment? And can they maybe even find the deeper reasons about why they did the initial behavior that maybe you're bringing to them and the deeper reasons or sort of roots of why their defensiveness responded that way. And this keys right in with number three, which is just good old fashioned lack of acknowledgement. And I do feel like when we feel threatened or when we're triggered or when we're in a conflict with someone, it's very common to want to make our case and to stand for our side and to make sure that we're really heard and sometimes even dominate the conversation to do that and sometimes even bulldoze over what the other person is saying because it's so important to us to be heard. And so we can get into habits of negating and diminishing the other side and just barreling forth with our own experience versus listening and considering and acknowledging what the other person is saying. And so the aspect that feels like gaslighting is just this sort of lack of acknowledgement that we're getting for our own experience. And I would say with both this lack of acknowledgement and with defense mechanisms, the thing to really look for is the time, the duration, and the intensity that these periods of initial reactivity cause. So time, how long does it go on before they can really see your side? And then the intensity, how much damage is done to you in that time? Is it really full of abuse when they're coming at you reactively? Are they insulting you? Are they using secrets that you've told them about your own past or fears or self-doubts against you? Are there a lot of insults happening? How aggressive is it? And how hard are they going after you? And that would be something to really feel about just what you want to put up with and what you think is fair and how you want to be treated in relationship. And I really think that question of time or of duration before they can see and hear your side and give you verbal acknowledgement of your experience is super, super key. I was in a five-year conflict facilitation program and one of the requirements for graduating from that program was that within 24 hours of getting into a conflict with someone, you had to be able to do enough inner work on yourself to be able to take accountability for the impact that you had on that other person, regardless of what your intention was, and also to be able to feel into a little bit of their side. So not only stand for your own side, but feel into theirs. Say, oh, I understand that you might have been feeling this. Is that right? And then follow their feedback. And so this skill of being able to hold your side and your subjective experience and also open yourself up to the others and be willing to be fluid and open to what they're bringing to you really, really matters. And I think when it becomes imbalanced, when one person is constantly feeling into the other person's experience and, oh, wow, I might have hurt you this way and that way, and the other person isn't, it's that imbalance that can start to feel abusive and be a little gaslighty and start moving more over here. So you really want to look at, are you making space to listen to and to feel into their side? And are they doing the same for you? And how is the balance there? And really what you're looking for is, do you have compassion for each other, right? Let's say one person is like, I listened to you for 30 minutes, tell me about your day. And you didn't ask me about mine. And someone is like, you didn't listen to my day at all, right? They're in a power struggle over reality. Did someone talk for 30 minutes about their day? Did the other person listen? And what's crazy is that in one person's experience, they might have really listened for 30 minutes. And in the other person's experience, they might not have been listened to at all. And so if there's mutual compassion for both of you, you can work on making a relationship that can hold both of those subjective experiences. You both did listen for 30 minutes and the person wasn't listened to for 30 minutes. 
but it has to be both ways. It has to be one person saying, I felt like I listened and I understand that you didn't feel that way. And the other person say, I didn't feel like you listened, but I understand you feel like you did. Because if it's not mutual, if it's not balanced, then you have war and bullying. And you have each person fighting for their own side and for their own reality. And that can be really hard. And the last point is that I would say, in addition to sort of making friends with subjective reality and creating a relationship that can hold that, you also might really wanna look at objective reality. Dr. Romani says that a good test to sort of sense whether gaslighting is happening is if you feel the desire to record conversations. If you're feeling a desire to record that conversation, it's a good indication that you're either in a power struggle over what reality is or that someone is making you feel like your reality isn't true. And so I would say that that's a good part one, just to check if gaslighting is happening. We're on this side of the spectrum. But then part two is to see if you're with a gaslighter, more on this side of the spectrum. And this might sound weird, but a good question to ask, is there a mutual desire to record your conversations? Because that would show that both of you are kind of coming together with compassion and a desire to learn and grow and share together, right? So if you're both kind of down with like, yeah, I think we should record our conversations, or I think we should just communicate in writing when we're really triggered, then that shows that you're in it together. You're on the same side and trying to kind of hold each other in this difficult impasse that you guys are in. But on the other hand, if either you do decide to record it together, or you decide to record it on your own and you play it back for them and the other person responds with rage and outright denial in the face of the evidence that you're showing them, then that shows a real lack of ability to be open to your experience and you're more like with a gaslighter, right? It's like, how could you do that? What kind of sick person does that? Rage, denial, I didn't do that at all. Then you're kind of with someone who's straight up gaslighting you. Versus if you play it back for them and they're open to it and they're like, wow, I like understand you did listen to me for 30 minutes or you did tell me whatever. Then you're with someone who's actively working to kind of find the hidden truth underneath the projections and grow from this difficult experience that you guys are in. So those are my tips. Hope it's helpful. Sending you all so much love. Bye.